What's up, guys? Uh, one of these days, I am going to actually make a video about the heart of the Renaissance. But I've got so much stuff that if I put it all in one video, it's going to be incredibly long. So i probably just start a playlist. But for now, it's sufficient just to understand that before the Red Shield Banking Dynasty, before the Square and Compass guys, before the All-Seeing Eye guys, before everybody you think is powerful and pulling strings in the world, there was Giovanni and his donkey. Okay, it was actually Cosimo on the right, but Giovanni's the one that taught him everything. This is the Medici family, and these are the OG bankers of the Italian Renaissance. Now, it's widely known that these guys banked all of the famous artists like Michelangelo, but they also bankrolled all of the printing presses and all of the literature and all of the schools of thought. They had also revived, wink, wink, the old Roman banking system. They must have been set up pretty well after the collapse. But they became the first modern international bankers and even had a branch in London. Just remember, there's been international trade for thousands of years. The Medicis also became the bankers of the most powerful organization of our modern times. When you get down to it, these guys were behind pretty much all of the colonization. They used the Spanish for a while and then there was a changing of the guard and then they used the English and they got a run for their money over control of America by the square and compass guys. I'll have to do a video about our modern structure of things at some point but let's go back to Renaissance Italy where it doesn't matter if there has been time added in or not nobody's denying that they were picking up the crumbs of society after the black death and losing a large portion of the population. And the Renaissance, the rebirth, was a few generations after all of this, where a bunch of rich families like the Medicis and the Papacy decided to update the history books. And I couldn't think of a good segue, so Plato. What does Plato have to do with the Renaissance? Well, let me show you what Anatoly Fomenko has to say. Now, this is ridiculed and called pseudoscience by mainstream, but... Anybody who's swerving outside of their lane is going to be called that. And there's some pretty crazy stuff in the book. I highly recommend you can get this on Internet Archives. And he brings up a lot of interesting points. Like, the ancient Plato is supposed to have been the founding father of Platonism. His teaching allegedly falls into oblivion for centuries to come and is revived by the famous Neoplatonist Plutinus, allegedly in 205-270 A.D., the names are purely accidental, of course. The Neoplatonism perishes as well in order to be revived again in the 15th century, this time by Gemesto Platon. This medieval Platon is supposed to have revived the, quote, ancient Platonism. Furthermore, it's only the 15th century that Plato's manuscript was unearthed. So check this out. You got Platon around 1400 A.D., and both he and Plato write utopian works. Gemesto Platon is reported to have been the author of a famous tractate on the laws, which somehow disappeared to history. However, the full text of Plato's tractate by the same title did survive. Platon then founds Platon's Academy in Florence in the image of the ancient Plato's Academy. Now, Platon met Cosimo de' Medici and got him to fund the Platonic Academy. And then they hired Marsilio Ficino to translate everything into Latin, not from Latin. Because you got to remember, Latin was a dead language for 800 years, and then they revived it in the Renaissance. So Cosimo de' Medici invites Ficino out here to Montevecchio. Ficino is described as an ardent Neoplatonist and was here to study ancient Greek and work on translating the works of Plato into Latin. Ficino became the central figure of an informal group of people interested in his work who both corresponded and met with for intellectual discussions at Montevecchio. So what you got here is your first big money secret society of our modern age. So Gemesto has wrote down some pretty good ideas and shared them with other influential people of the area. But the city of Florence is ran by the mafia, uh, clergy, the clergy. The clergy really didn't want a world of free-thinking, insightful people. They wanted you to shut up and pray and pay your tithes. 
Somebody was dogging on me the other day about using Jesus in the church as historical markers. And it doesn't matter what you believe. There are a billion people that follow the church of Rome in our modern time. And for hundreds and hundreds of years, people have been tithing 10% to this organization every Sunday. So let's say today that that's only $10 a week for their billion people. That's $10 billion a week that these guys bring in. And they've been doing this since before the time of Jesus. Everybody's heard of the Pantheon, but it's a church and by its own name implies the Greek Pantheon gods. And they converted a lot of the temples to the old gods into churches. And none of this stuff gets built for free. Like in my video on the cargo cults, it shows how all of a sudden you got somebody that understands the wills of the gods. And this has been going on for thousands and thousands of years. The people that kept and built these temples had a lot of money donated their way. And when Christianity came along, they just converted into churches. And the people that already had the skill sets required to run a temple were now running churches. But you can definitely tell the difference between the old style and the new. And you guys can debate all you want about how they built it, but I'm going to tell you who paid for it. These guys with 10% of everybody's money. If you were excommunicated, then you couldn't do business. So still to this day, these guys are one of the richest countries in the world, just taking up, I think, a square mile in the center of Rome. And in their basement is all of the real writings from the ancient world. So yeah, I think talking about the church and its role in history is a pretty significant detail. <laughs> and oh yeah, remember the Inquisition? What do you think that was all about? It's where the clergy said, look, this is the way it is. You agree with us or really bad things are going to happen to you. And if you want to talk about a time in history that they might have changed the history, well, here, here's a pretty good candidate. It wasn't a good time to think unless you were really cold. Ah, now you get it. <laughs> so here's how this all fits together. The clergy runs Florence. If you've got any thoughts about life that contradict what they're teaching, well, you might get lit on fire, but you might just get excommunicated. But if you're just excommunicated, then that means you can't interact with anybody else in the town. Heresy was a really big deal to some really important people. Cosimo de' Medici understood this, and he was playing both sides of the fence. He actually got a pirate elected pope. I'll have to tell you about that another time. But if you were a free-thinking philosopher with all of these radical ideas, it's best to keep them to yourself in Florence. But you got to chatting up the richest guy in town at a coffee shop and shared your ideas, and he says, hey, come on out to Monte Vecchio. Now, Plathon is in the in crowd. I mean, this is all the top artists. This was way before Da Vinci or anything, but it was this level of, you know, top tier Renaissance people. I mean, it, you got to hand it to the humanists is what they're referred to. They wanted a good, respectable, dignified society. And you can see in their artwork that they kind of romanticize Greco-Roman culture. And really, they're, they're trying to keep the old world alive in a drastically changing environment. They're rebuilding a whole new world after all those events of the 1300s I talk about. Now, one of the tenets of, quote, Neoplatonism is emanation. It's the idea that all of creation is emanating from the one, the source. Anybody who has ever had a good hard trip intuitively knows this theory. But this stands in stark contrast to what the clergy is teaching and the six days of creation and on the seventh day, God rested. Also, Platonism teaches the somewhat utopian idea of the perfect society being governed by a republic, while the clergy teaches that society should be ruled over by a king. And who has the authority to anoint this man king? Well, the clergy, of course. So if you're having all of these radical ideas in 14th century Florence, you're about to get a quick trip to the stake. So I would say that this all went down something like this. Cosimo de' Medici, the OG, triple OG, godfather of the Renaissance, meets Plathon and likes his ideas, but he knows good and well that he can't go public with these. So he comes up with the plan. He takes Plathon and Ficino and says, hey, let's go out to Montevecchio for the summer, and we'll translate all of these into the old Latin, 
and then we'll just tell everybody that this is a thousand years old. So it's not heresy. We just found an old book. We can't help what it says. Hmm, kind of makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Now, they say that Latin was a dead language for 800 years or whatever before the Renaissance. And here's how I think that all goes. I read an article a couple years back about a 16th century Spanish manuscript that had been found, and it took a whole team of scholars to translate it into modern Spanish because languages just change that fast. If you read how people wrote English in the early 1800s, things have changed a lot. So I think where Latin started in the Roman Empire and where it wound up by 500 AD or so was probably a completely different language. By then, people spoke more Italian than Latin, which Latin is the root of the Italian language. And I, I think them reviving the old Latin was kind of class warfare because, you know, the priestly class were the only ones that spoke Latin and therefore could read the Bible for hundreds of years. Now, the last thing I want to touch on here is Plato was supposed to have taught Aristotle, who was supposed to have taught Alexander the Great. Now, I know some people think that all history was just completely made up out of the blue. I don't think so. The city of Alexandria in Egypt, if you've heard of it, is named after Alexander the Great, and he's known in all of the cultures far and wide. I watched a video about this kid, you know, touring India, and he's up in the mountains of the Kush, and there's this one village that is renowned for growing really good smoke, and he wants to go get some. And when he gets there, the people insist that he put the money on the ground, and they won't take it from him directly. And it's not because it's illegal to buy and sell there, it's because these guys are direct descendants of Alexander the Great. And it's beneath them to accept money from some random dude. So these guys are pretty elitist up in their little village in the mountains. So I think Alexander the Great was a very real person. And if Plathon really did invent the character of Plato, then him being the teacher of Aristotle, being the teacher of Alexander the Great, may have been a way to add extra credibility to it. Also, I would say that Aristotle was a completely different person than Plato or Plathon. A lot of people act like it's simple to just sit down and write from the perspective of all of these deep thinkers and act like one person just rewrote all history like it's some easy thing to do. And I don't think that's the case. But if you've got 15, 20 of your friends all hanging out at Montevecchio, then yeah, you can come up with point and counterpoint and then have Ficino translate it into the old Latin and then it has a little bit of authority dust on it. Because all good scholars know that those books that have been sitting there for a hundred years are completely true and couldn't have possibly been invented just a couple hundred years ago. Anyway, there's a lot more to this. Uh, that's it for now. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Static out.